In this tutorial, we will have a look at using AppLab to create a survey app. This would be a mobile phone app that could be used to count the occurrence of something. I've come here to uh, code.org and there are a variety of projects that can be started. And we're looking at starting AppLab. I'm going to click on the AppLab link here. Uh, notice you also have uh, the option to use the create menu at the side there. And I now have a blank project that I can use. So the first thing I'm going to do is to give it a name. So I'm going to come up here to the top bar and click on rename. And I'm going to make something that lets me count cars when I'm out and about in the street. So this is a car counting app. And I click on save there, and I have now named my app. Now, there are several aspects to working with mobile apps. Uh, we have to design them, and the design uh, allows us to place objects, widgets, onto the screen area that the user can interact with. We're trying to make a good, useful layout that is easy for the user to understand. We've then got a code section, which is for us to create the interactions, the actual instructions that run on the app and make it do what it should. And we also have a data section, and we're not going to really use the data section at the moment for this app, but obviously if we were running a survey, then having something that can store the data would potentially be very useful. So I'm going to come back to design here. I'm going to start to design my application. I'm going to start with a label. So I take the label from the design toolbox. I drag it and drop it onto the screen. And it then appears there as a little box with text in it. Get into the habit of immediately when you've put a, a widget onto the screen to uh, rename it. I'm going to rename it to label title because it is the title of my app. And I'm going to change text to car counting survey. So we always try to make a good looking and effective app for the user. So there's a few things that I could do here. Uh, the first thing is that I might uh, take the width of this box up to 300. And I can use these spinners here or I could just type straight into the box. I'm going to use the spinners. So the way they have a box 300 wide, the whole screen is 320 by 480. Or approximately, yeah, 450-ish it's looking like there. Uh, so what we could do is we could move the X position here to 10. And that will center this box uh, here near the top of the screen. I'm then going to increase the font size. So scrolling down here in my properties section, everything we want to change about our widget once we've dropped it on is done in this property section. So I'm going to change the font size from 13 and I'm just going to nudge it up until it is filling the box. So 24 looks like the perfect size there. I'll have to change the height of that label in order to be able to see all of the text. And that's looking fairly good. Um, I can change things like the color of the text. So again, if I just make sure I've got that chosen and I click on text color. Uh, for my survey, I might want something nice and big and bright. So I'll maybe go for something like a deepish purple or magenta. And uh, the font family I could change. If I didn't want Arial, I could maybe go for something like Comic. Although notice that that changes the width that I've used there when I had already chosen the font specifically to match the size of the box. So, uh, and the other last thing obviously to think about is if you center that, it would just be neatly placed within the box. So I've got my label on. Uh, I'm now going to create some buttons that can be clicked in order to uh, carry out my survey. 
So I'm going to start here with a button, drag it on, and uh, I'm then going to immediately change that to button red car. Notice I'm using something called camel case, where each new word gets a capital letter. So button red car, uh, and I'm going to put in to the text of that red. And the other thing that would be quite useful here is to visually indicate that this is choosing a red car. So first of all, the color of it is red, which is uh, not reflected in what we've got there. So I might want to take it to red like so. But I can also put in an image. So using the properties here, I go down to image, I can click on choose, and I could upload a picture of a red car, or I could link to um, uh, an image of a red car from the internet, or I can go to icons. And if I go to icons, and I can see I've got an airplane there, and I'm looking for something that would do as a red car. I can see a truck here. And uh, here we go. So we've got a red car there. And the icon color, uh, maybe that would have been better to be red. And therefore, I should change the background color to something maybe pale yellow instead. Okay, so I have my box. Uh, notice the button. I could change things like the position and the height and the width here, but I can also just do it on the screen. I can drag the little corner here and make it uh, a bit bigger. I can grab the button and I can move it around on the page. So there is my red car. Uh, I would, get, I guess, like to have a blue car as well, so I'm going to duplicate that. And that produces button two. And I'm going to call this button uh, blue car. The text on that is going to be blue. The icon color. i just move this down here. So the icon color is going to be blue. And I need to pick from here. That looks fine. Okay, and we might just want one more. So I'm going to go back up to the top here. I'm going to click on duplicate and I'm going to put button other car. And button other car. I will put uh, the text of that to be uh, any color. And the icon itself, I will then change to maybe be a kind of, uh, maybe a silverish color. So maybe something like that. And then I'm going to change the text color from white to black. So I've laid out uh, my buttons for taking the survey. They're a little bit ragged, so I'll just adjust to there. And next to them, I'm going to put a label. So I'm going to take a label here. I'm going to drag it on beside this red car. And I'm going to change that from label two to label red car. I'm going to set the text of it to be zero because this is a counter. So we start off with no red cars. And then I'm going to crank up the font size to maybe something like 60. And that will be used as our counter. I'm going to duplicate that and go for label blue car move it into position and I'm going to duplicate it again label any car now I could use uh, very precise uh, placement to make sure these all line up effectively 
uh, and that's where we would use these numbers here. This top one is at uh, x position 130, y position 65. So 130 in from the side. This one is 130 in from the side. This one is 130 in from the side. So they are all lining up neatly. Now that we've got uh, these on here, uh, we would like the buttons to be able to do something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on button red car and I'm going to go to events. And the only event that we've got associated with a button is to click it. So I'm going to insert and show code here. And if I insert and show code, you'll see that what's happened is in the workspace, uh, we've got button red car click produces a function. And that function logs on the console button red car clicked. Now what I'm going to do here is just press run and see if that's working for me. So my app is up and running. I click on the red car and down here you can see button red car clicked has appeared. Let me try that again. That's fine. However, that's not much use. What I want to do is to change this score here. So I'm going to click on reset. And I'm going to come in here to the available uh, coding blocks. And instead of just logging to the console, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the text. So I'm going to use a set text function here. And I'm going to snap it in there. And I need to choose what I'm going to set the text of. So I'm going to set label red car because I've clicked the red button. So I want it to affect the red label. Now, if I just said I'm going to set it to text and run this, you'll see that what happens when I click here, it now changes to the T of text. So that's not really what we want to do. What we're looking to do is to add one onto this number here. So looking at my toolbox, I can see I've got maths. And I'm going to come, there's various different mathematical operators here. I'm going to use plus. Instead of text, I'm going to put two things added together. And back to UI controls, I want to get the number. What do I want to get the number of? I want to get the number of the red label, label red car. And what I want to do with that, I want to add one to it. So if I now run this, click on the red car, it goes up by one. Click on the blue, nothing happens because we haven't got any code for that yet. Same with any color. Keep clicking red and it goes up. When it gets to 10, I can't see all of it. And that's because I didn't make this box wide enough. So I'm going to go back into design view. I'm going to choose this. Uh, box here, this label, and change its width up to something like maybe 150. And then I want to do the same with all the other boxes. I want them to be big enough to show maybe hundreds of clicks. Uh, and I'm here, and just to show, I can highlight that and type 150 instead of um, just using the spinners. Okay, so I run. Now I can see 10, so that's good. These still don't do anything. So the last thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to code here. So this is me in design view to make changes to how things look. I'm coming back up to the code button, click on that. And I need to build some new events. Now I could do this by saying, uh, on event and then saying when a uh, button blue car is clicked what do I want to do I want to set the text oh, set the text of label blue car what do I want to set it to come back to math click on plus come back to UI controls I want to get the number from label blue car and I want to add one to it. In this way, you can continue using the blocks to build up your code and complete your application.